In this lesson, we will examine a useful strategy to consider when tackling data sufficiency questions. Now, in the previous lesson, we examined the following question, where Tahir receives a base salary plus a 5% commission on his total sales revenue. In this question, we want to determine Tahir's total sales revenue for last month. In that lesson, we summarized the information by letting B equal Tahir's base salary, letting R equal his total sales revenue last month, and letting P equal his total pay last month. Since his commission is 5% of his total sales revenue, we wrote that Tahir's commission for any given month is equal to 0.05 times R. We also wrote that P, Tahir's total pay last month, is equal to B, his monthly base salary, plus his commission, which is equal to 0.05R. The target question asks us to find Tahir's total sales revenue, so we wrote this to remind us of that. Now at this point, we have summarized all of the information as well as the target question, so we won't need to reread this passage later on. Now is there anything else we might do before examining the statements? Well, in many cases, it is useful to first rephrase the target question to help us identify information in the corresponding statements that may be sufficient to help us answer the target question. Now, at this moment, we see that we need to find the value of R. But what information would be sufficient to determine the value of R? For example, would it be sufficient to know the sum of B to here's base salary and R his total sales revenue for last month? It's hard to tell at this moment. Now we want to find the value of R, and we already have an equation with R in it. So let's see if we can do anything with that. We can isolate R by subtracting B from both sides, and then dividing both sides by 0.05. So R equals P minus B over 0.05. We can now take our earlier target question, which asks us to find the value of R and rephrase it as, what is the value of P minus B over 0.05? At this point, we can see exactly what sort of information will allow us to solve the target question. We need to know the value of P and the value of B, or we can also answer the target question if we know the value of P minus B. Now let's examine the two statements. Statement 1 tells us that Tahir's total pay last month was $12,000. In other words, P equals 12000 Does this provide us with enough information to find the value of our new target question? Well, if we replace P with 12000 we can see that we still need to find the value of B in order to evaluate this. So statement 1 must be insufficient. On to statement 2. Here we are told that Tahir's total pay last month was $10,000 greater than his base salary. In other words, P, Tahir's total pay, minus B, his base salary, is equal to $10,000. Does this provide us with enough information to find the value of our new target question? Sure, if we replace P minus B with 10,000, we can see that we can evaluate this fraction to be 200,000. So statement 2 is sufficient, which means our answer is B. Now let's examine a different question. Here the target question asks us to determine whether or not 4x is less than 3x. Is there another way we can rephrase this question? Well, if we subtract 3x from both sides of the inequality, we can rewrite our target question as, is x less than 0? Or we can rewrite that as, is x negative? So there are three different ways to phrase the target question. I think you'll find that the last two versions make this question a lot easier to answer. It's much easier to determine whether x is less than 0 than it is to determine whether 4x is less than 3x. Now let's examine statement 1. We can simplify this by subtracting 4 from both sides and then dividing both sides by 3. So statement 1 essentially tells us that x is less than negative one third. Does this provide sufficient information to answer one of our new target questions? Sure, if x is less than negative one third, then x must be negative. So statement 1 is sufficient. 
on to statement two. Here we'll isolate x by adding three to both sides and then dividing both sides by two to get x is less than 2.5. Does this provide sufficient information to answer one of our new target questions? No, if x is less than 2.5, x could be negative, but it could also be positive. So statement two is insufficient, which means our answer is A. Notice that by rephrasing the target question, we are better able to identify the information required to answer the question. So let's spend some time rephrasing questions. Now please keep in mind that some of the topics addressed in the following examples may be ones you have not yet covered in your studies. So I will leave it to you to later confirm the rationale in the following examples once you have covered the related topics. Okay, in this example, Dafina is a student in a class. One student is selected from the class, and we want to determine whether the probability is less than 0.1 that Dafina is selected. So we could write the target question as follows. Is the probability less than 0.1? Now since 0.1 is equal to 1 tenth, we could rewrite this question as, is the probability less than 1 tenth? Now is there another way we could write this target question? Well, what would need to happen for the probability to equal 0.1? For that to happen, there would need to be exactly 10 students in the class. If there were 10 students, then the probability of selecting Dafina would be 1 tenth. So in order for the probability to be less than 0.1, there would need to be more than 10 students. So another way to phrase the question is, is the class size greater than 10? Okay, here's another example. Can the positive integer k be expressed as the product of two integers, each of which is greater than 1? This is a good example of the importance of rewording the target question, since it isn't exactly clear what is being asked here. So what sorts of numbers can be expressed as the product of two integers, each of which is greater than one? Well, we may recognize that prime numbers can only be written as the product of one and the number itself. So if k can be expressed as a product of two integers, each of which is greater than one, that means that k is not prime. So the question is asking us, is k a non-prime number? In other words, is k a composite number? So the original question is just a tricky way to ask whether k is a composite number. The true target question is hidden within the words here. Now you will find that as a question's level of difficulty rises, the degree to which the target question is hidden also rises, and this in turn places a larger emphasis on the importance of rephrasing. Now for the rest of this lesson, I'm not going to spend a lot of time providing rationale for the different ways to rephrase each target question. The goal here is to simply show how target questions can often be rephrased in order to help determine the sufficiency of the corresponding statements. Now if you are just beginning your studies, you may want to revisit this lesson in the future since you may have not yet tackled the topics of geometry, integer properties, and so on. Okay, let's look at some more. Is the absolute value of x less than 1? Well, one way to rephrase this is, is x greater than negative 1 and less than 1? Or we could rewrite it as, is x squared less than 1? Can you think of any other ways to rephrase the target question? What about this one? x and y are integers, and x is less than 0. The target question asks, is x to the power of y greater than 0? In other words, is x to the power of y positive? Now this is a frequently tested concept that requires us to recognize that for x to the power of y to be positive, y must be an even number. So if y must be an even number, we can rephrase the target question as, is y even? In this question, we want to determine whether or not w squared minus y squared is equal to x squared. So we could move the variables around to ask, does x squared plus y squared equal w squared? Now if x squared plus y squared were to equal w squared, then we would have a right triangle here. So we could ask, is this a right triangle? Or we could ask, does angle C equal 90 degrees? There are several ways to rephrase the target question. 
and each new wording suggests another way in which corresponding statements could be sufficient. What about this one? The target question asks, does x equal 90? Another way to phrase this is, is AC the diameter of the circle? Here we are told that x and y are positive integers, and the target question asks, is x over y an integer? Now this is a frequently tested concept related to integer properties. We can rephrase this question as, is y a divisor of x, or is x a multiple of y? Here the target question is, does 2x equal y? We can rewrite this one as, is a the center of the circle? Do you see why? If not, you might want to review the circle properties. Here's another tricky one. We're told that k is an integer greater than 1, and s is the sum of all the positive divisors of k. The target question asks, is s greater than k plus 1? What's another way to phrase the target question? Well, this target question can be rephrased as, is k not prime? Do you see why? Okay, that's enough rephrasing for now. Remember that rephrasing the target question will often provide a lot of insight into a question. It helps you to fully understand the target question, and more importantly, each new target question suggests another way in which the two corresponding statements could be sufficient. Now as you tackle more and more data sufficiency questions, keep a list of the original target questions and the ways in which you rephrased them. You will find that several themes are repeated on the GMAT, and this will help you identify them.